Bonaparte's restaurant is in dire straits. New owner, Sue Ray, has sunk everything into it. It's frustrating the hell out of it at the moment, because we're going nowhere. The customers are nowhere to be seen. How many's booked? None, God. Nothing at all? No. Chances of walk-in, perhaps? Slim. The kitchen's down to two staff, and the money has nearly run out. I'm going in to identify the problems. I'll find out if the market's there. How much do you pay for that? Well, I'm not going to pay a lot, would you? <laughs> If the team are pulling together... You take a fucking penalty. And if the head chef is clued up enough. You're taking the piss, you know that. I've got just one week to turn this restaurant into a viable business. The honeymoon's over. We've got to start making profit now. Next to its posh neighbours, Ilkley and Skipton, sits Silsden. A little working-class town yet to make its mark on the culinary map of Britain. Lots of uh, fish bars, cafes, quite a quaint little place, a little small Yorkshire town. Bonaparte's wine bar and basement restaurant on the high street was taken over by its current owner just over a year ago. In her time, Sue Ray has sold everything from donkey rides to cavity wall insulation. But the restaurant business is totally new to her, and so far, the locals aren't biting. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sue? It is, yes. Hi. Hi, pleased to meet you. Likewise. Hi. So how's it going? A bit quieter today. How many did you have for lunch? About two. Two, ready? That's it. And last night? Last night, I think we did only two again. That's all. Two customers two the whole customers night? Two customers the whole night, yeah. Unfortunately, it's just died a death. Absolute death. The stark truth is that two-thirds of restaurants don't survive past their first birthday. And as things stand, Sue's in danger of adding to those statistics. As a last resort, she's placed all her trust in a 21-year-old head chef. Together, they believe that fine dining will guarantee Bonaparte's a brighter future. It's like being an artist, you know what I mean? You just start from, from nothing and create something, so I think that's why I love being a chef. From a humble start five years ago washing dishes, Tim has had a meteoric rise. Obviously, I would like a, f a couple of restaurants, maybe three, being Leeds and London, New York, you know, wherever, just big cities, you know, so that, that's my main ambition, and obviously to make a lot of money. Tim's ultimate dream is to become a TV chef. You put Parmesan through this, chef. But for now, he's embracing his first opportunity to run his own kitchen. And how did you find Tim? Uh, he found me. Um, he knew I'd been struggling with chefs and uh, lack of them. Mm. And he's very ambitious. He must be fucking good if he's a head chef at 21, though. <laughs> no? Either that or he's a fucking good bullshitter. Yeah. <laughs> Tim. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Likewise. And? It's a pleasure, Lee. Lee. Yeah. So you're the head chef? Yeah. And you're the... Well, you're obviously going to be the second chef. There's only two of you. <laughs> Busy lunch? No. No? Absolutely not. No one. Uh, I didn't think so. Were you standing there twiddling your thumbs? No? Sue's food takings are a dismal £200 a week. She should be clearing at least ten times that, but she's not even covering Tim's wages, let alone food costs and overheads. Chefs can't get excited unless there's customers to cook for. I'll never know how good they are unless there's any customers in the fucking restaurant. Uh, Tim, how many's booked? None, Garden. Nothing at all? No. no. Chances of walk-ins, perhaps? Slim. Don't want to see you under a little bit of pressure tonight. Right. It's five to six. I want you to get out on the street, go knock on a few doors, and invite some locals to dinner. Get your coats on and fuck off for some customers. If the customers won't come in off their own free will, these two young chefs are going to have to go and drag them in. Excuse me. We'd like to invite you for a uh, free meal. Down. Fine dining requires the ultimate in presentation, surroundings and service. You've just had one. Thank You've just had one. But most of all, it requires faultless food. <laughs> you just need the people coming in now. Okay. It's like a big cake. You've got all the ingredients and you can mix it. You just got to find the right consistency to make it rise. You'll go? OK, I'll see you there. Cheers. The reputation of this place can't be that great. Even with free food from the fine dining menu on offer, they've only managed to pull in 11 guests. For any head chef, this would be a walk in the park. First order, two pigeon, main course, one venison, one brew. OK, no Where do the tickets go? Um, well, I just put them there because we never really get enough to worry about it. Oh, fuck me. That's nice. <laughs> Who's doing what? Who's doing the fish? I'll do the fish. And what would you like to do tonight? 
Uh, I'll do venison. What I'm trying to say is how the fuck do you organise your kitchen? Oh, well, Lee, you... take care of the hot starters, I'll do the cold starters, you do the fish, I'll do the meat. We well, jump on the pudding together. Here, then Leo stand here and I'll do this one. Right. And just when when I'm not doing anything, then I'll just jump on and help him out. You know how to organise? Within reason. Within reason, okay, here we go. Where did you put red bar, Lee? With the first orders in, now I can really see what's going on in the kitchen. What was that? Oh, I just trashed a load of balls. You better send the bread first, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Never mind fine dining. They can't even get the bread right. It's fucking awesome. frozen. Right. Get it back in the oven. Are the pigeons ready? Yes. We're about to put them in the bin because the bread's frozen, pigeons are cooked, and the fucking... Bread's not even out there. And if you toss that fucking cabbage once more, I'm going to ram up your ass, OK? Yeah. <laughs> Can we... Yeah. You know, everything you turn around in. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Even when the kitchen's busy, you should be looking to get the starters out within ten minutes of receiving the order. Thank you very much. These poor souls have waited half an hour for their pigeon breast with mushroom ravioli. And that's not the only problem. Tim, you made a ravioli? Yes. It's burnt. Do right. you not taste that there? No. Smell it, then. You honestly can't taste that burn. But now, now you point it out. Yeah. Get that shit in the bin. This is really worrying. A head chef who can't even taste his own food's burnt. He's not going to win any prizes for his control of the kitchen, either. And there's only two of them in here. Oh, it's one leaking chair. I need an egg for... OK, can you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear that? Hold on, hold on, come in. The buzzing, veg, veg. the buzzing in the background. That's the veg in the microwave that should have gone with the main course four minutes ago. things out. For some, an hour's wait is just too much. Desperate to keep her staff costs down, Sue has got her hands full running the bar upstairs and seems blissfully unaware of the farce that's taking place in the basement. Kitchen's a disaster. A disaster beyond belief. The blind eating the blind and the left arm not knowing what the right arm's doing. And You want 50, 60 seats filled down there and they've got... 11 customers in for dinner and up to the eyeballs in shitter. I mean, real shit. Everything's going in these cutters. For some bizarre reason, they think that rings is the sort of ultimate fine dining experience, but I don't understand what the hell's going on there. I don't know. All I know is I'm not making money. So I don't know what they're at or where they're coming from. But it's Sue's business, and she should be in charge. Look at the fucking mess. Huh? I've never seen such hard work for 11 guests. No. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make you feel good, does it? No, not really. I've got just one week to make a constructive impact on Bonaparte. But by day two, I'm clutching at straws to find any positives to build on. Sue lacks focus and has clearly lost control. The kitchen's such a tip, it's a health hazard. And worst of all, the head chef and his mate just aren't up to scratch. I must be missing something. Um, gentlemen. Tim, sing the dish. Scallops. Scallops. Can't wait to sit. Nearly every successful restaurant has a dish that is renowned for. I'm hoping that by cooking his, Tim will produce something truly memorable, something truly worthy of a place on a fine dining menu. That's your signature dish, which is... Um, scallops with uh, deep fried parma and black pudding sauce hollandaise. Mm -hmm. Certainly looks okay. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> it's got to be sick. <coughs> He's only gone and given me a rancid scallop. Will someone get him a drink? A drink with. Shit. How can you eat that? Oh. If you knew they were off, I didn't. why didn't you say? No, I didn't. I didn't know they were off. They're fucking minging. Do you not taste that? I do now, yeah. It took a while to know. <coughs> <coughs> I know what it means. I feel sick myself now. It's, um... It's grim. It's fucking grim. And it's out of order. Well, I didn't realise they were fucking off. So, I suppose it's my fault, really. 
I could kill someone. That's the bottom line. In the two days I've spent at Bonaparte, I've witnessed total incompetence in the kitchen, total lack of direction for the management, and last but not least, they've tried their best to kill me with a rotten scallop. What the fuck are you playing at? Sorry, Chef. Well, it's not about being fucking sorry. You shouldn't be in a fucking kitchen if you don't know what's right and what's wrong in that sense. I mean, this is basic fucking cooking, you know that? I need to check if there's any more surprises lurking in Tim's kitchen. Let's have a look in here. When are they from? Uh, Saturday. Saturday? Would you use them today? No. No, so what the fuck are they doing in the fridge? Well, uh, it looks like rabbit shit, that one. It's just some lentils. Oh, this one's stuck to the fucking glass. Yeah, it looks like sheep's turd that's been infested with ants. We've got fucking fur on fucking potatoes. When's that from? I can't tell you. What are we doing with them? Throw them in bin. Throw them in bin. But you keep them in the fridge for two days before you throw them in bin. Um, no, but do you, do you see what I'm trying to get at? Yeah. Does it yeah. make fucking sense? No, yes or no? No, no? So all this fucking fridge is jam-packed with shit, and we're standing here saying, we'll put them in bin, we'll put them in bin. Well, get them in the fucking bin! This whole kitchen is disgustingly filthy. In allowing things to fester, Tim's putting Sue's business at risk. Fuck it, girl. Can we get that one cleaned out as well, yeah? Yes. Just one bad thing can contaminate a whole fridge. Tim may as well just chuck money out the window. A health inspector would have a field day. Do you know what? I'm fucking gobsmacked. You know that? I've got a good fucking mind to get hold of fucking Sue and just tell her to fucking close the place for me. You know that? Because this is the fucking pits. You should be ashamed. Rock bottom. I've never seen anything like this in my entire fucking life. You know that? Because this is a fucking embarrassment to catering, let alone fucking ringed out fine dining. Let's move her. Not the best start it could have been, were it? To be honest. Fucking, like, it's all right, you know, I'll sort it out. The picture's becoming painfully clear. Tim's completely unqualified to do this job. He's blagged his way in, and Sue's been naive enough to take him on. When you do put so much, like, hard work into creating stuff, and then you don't, you don't use it, you, then you get bored. That's what I've done. Like footballers playing with no football in it, they just run around. What's the point? They'll sit on their asses after a while, won't they? That's how it is. All this ingredients in there, and, and, and no customers to send it to, and yet none of them have been communicating with each other. You know, that's got to go tomorrow. Can we turn that into a fish pie? Can we do something with it? But no, the blind leading the blind, mm. and every bloody ingredient in that fridge um, is, is, is money, your money. Mm. Sue has no idea what's going on in her own it's kitchen. Like Key to any successful restaurant is regular communication between management and the head chef. I really need to get these two talking. Everyone just had a word with me and said uh, she's not very impressed. We need to keep the place clean and everything tidy, otherwise I can be sued. In which case I'm out of business and you're out of a job. Realise I'd, that. Yeah, I know, and I've taken have to take it on board as well. Well. You know, just, you just have to stick her oar in. She wasn't going to say, I told you so, but that's what she was doing. Yeah? Fair enough. She had the little dig, so what? Fuck her. You know what I mean? Relations between Tim and Sue clearly aren't healthy. Lee? Yeah? Goggles? Gloves? Before we do any fucking cooking in here now, I want the place absolutely spotless. Goggles on, please. That's it, show me. You handsome bastard. It's not just the kitchen that's at fault here. Any clued up restaurateur knows it's damn stupid to attempt fine dining in a basement, let alone one that's beneath a busy bar. Sue's panic is obvious when you see the weird mix of fine dining menus and scrappy handwritten boards advertising TV name cabarets. Bonaparte's image has clearly confused potential customers. She was trying really to think to do too many things, to be all things to all people. So she was trying to have, you know, live music and have an internet cafe. <laughs> and uh, also the impression that you got when you came in was she'd be shuffling around in her leggings and her slippers. 
<laughs> I don't think she's going to attract the, the people that she wants to attract. It's not as nice as the one that's something to cross the road. The newly opened competition just 200 yards away has been fully booked since it opened, so the pundits are definitely out there. It's time to find a clear identity for Bonaparte and make a clean start. Valentine's night is just four days away. It's one of the most important nights of the Russian calendar, and it can make or break a new venture. If we're going to reinvent Bonaparte's image, we've got to do it now. But will Sue accept the drastic change of direction I'm about to propose? It's clearly not going to work as a fine dining experience. Does so Tim know how much pressure you're under financially? I say flippantly, you know, I'll end up going bankrupt if you're not careful, but mm. he doesn't realise how true that is. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, how close are you in real terms? In real terms, um, probably. I've got probably three months, maximum. Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm willing to take constructive criticism. I mean, it's not working, is it? Otherwise we'd have more people in. The basics are wrong. I mean, the, the basics are so, so wrong, and it's, mm. you know, it's embarrassing. It's what? got to go back to comfort, rustic, easy-going food. It's got to become more of a bistro, because the place mm. oozes that kind of style. I know Sue's convinced, but if I'm to flush out Tim's pretensions to fine dining once and for all, I need to provide him with evidence that he can't fail to take on board. Gentlemen, Tim. Right, this is a uh, sea of scallops with a uh, baby black pudding with a nice hollandaise cayenne pepper sauce and a bit of uh, deep-fried parmesan. It looks like potato, but I'm not sure. First time you had a scallop? Mm. And this is a beef and ale pie. I'll have a bit of beef. I'm a patient. Please, man. Mm. Yeah? Beautiful. The scallops and the black pudding and the parma ham. How much do you pay for that? Well, I'm wanting to pay a lot, would you? <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. Scallops are dear anyway, aren't they? So, 8 50 8 50 For and, the one portion? And what would you pay for the pie? Well, about £8. About £8. Pound. £7.95. Oh, what a far off. And £8.95. Well, well done. Off, mm. Which well, one would you prefer? Well, I like the pie, personally. Well, I like, I like the meat. I'm definitely a meat lover. Mm. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. One nil, you fucker. <laughs> Tim needs to learn a few basic restaurant rules. If you don't know your market, you'll never get bums on seats. I would probably go with this one. Mm -hmm. Two fucking nil. Next, please. Have oh, you got two seconds? Here's another one. Have you got two seconds? Restaurants without like customers will go bust. You don't like scallops? <laughs> Three nil, you <laughs> Excuse me. Put another way, Tim needs to start producing food that people of Silsden won't be able to resist. That is gorgeous, sir. Yeah. I would pay that for we that. We were low on that. that. You wouldn't pay 8.95 for that. In, in the major cities, yeah, I'd expect to. But that, that is very, Yorkshire. very reasonable and delicious. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Well, I am listening. Be through. That's where we're going. Yeah, fine dining. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going in for it? It's not bad news, you know that. It's fucking well, it's good, good news. news. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's clear, huh? The writing's on the wall. She's come to the end of the tiller up there. That's pretty obvious, that. Yeah, she's, she's had enough, huh? Yeah, yeah. Is that clear? Yeah, it's clear, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, you're fucking cocky with her, you know that? Yeah. Yeah, and she pays your fucking salary. Are you mad? How much have you put in here? Nothing. Yeah, not a fucking penny. Not a single penny. But you've taken from it, haven't you? Yep. So now it's time to give back. Absolutely, definitely. And not cooking for egos. Get rid of it. Back to basics, you know that. What I want you two to do, just to confirm that we do know the basics, both at the same time, cook me a fucking omelette. Show me something that I can eat and be happy with. An omelette is probably one of the first things you learn to cook at Catering College. When was the last time you cooked an omelette? I haven't cooked one before. I've never cooked an omelette before. Oh, don't be stupid. I haven't. Look inside. What does that tell you? Um, slightly overcooked. Slightly? It tastes like fucking rubber. We're both overcooked. That was shit, by any standard. You were a head chef. You're taking the piss, you know that.
You are taking the piss, you know that? Yes, Carlin. Gives you nothing back. And the whole idea of telling him off is to sort of help train him and educate him, but clearly not used to being told what to do. Right, make me another omelette. Fuck it. Let's go. Any chef worth his salt should be able to source good quality ingredients at a good price. The locals already think Bonaparte's is too expensive. They want value for money. For Sue to start making any sort of profit, Tim needs to be clever about what he buys. Have two uh, bacon sandwiches, please, and two cups of tea. He needs to wake up to the real world. He's clearly in need of some inspiration for his new bistro-style menu. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. That, that's your one, that one. Don't spill it on those new trainers, will you? No, uh, try not to. The Chinese tongues. Tonight, you've got a table of four in. I want you, OK, to buy right. starter, main course and pudding. 20 quid. Five quid per head. Right. And I want to see how clever you are with that money. Right. Morning. Morning. Come on in, love. I'm making fresh onion soup. Right, we're making some um, French onion soup today, so uh, we're looking for some, like, sort of rustic, like, baguettes. Well, I'll do with this baguette here in this window, and that's it. Nice look at that. Can I have, can I have a look at that? Clearly, Tim's never bought anything from a market before in his life. Yeah, never okay. had any. Discount for the trade? Any discount for the trade? Any discount for the trade? What, a pound? Do you have to do that? I'm not with that. It's always worth bargaining for, you know that. Yeah. So when you're on the telephone in the morning, you're checking with your suppliers and you want to know how much the fish is, you can always bargain with them. I bet you don't treat Sue's money this way, do you? I will do from now on. You're fucking right, you will. Tim's menus are packed with expensive fish and meat cuts. He needs to open his eyes to the tasty, less expensive options on offer. Yeah? What's that next to the pig's head? What is that there? Um, That's oxtail. Oxtail. You ever used oxtail before? No. What would you do with a brazen steak? I don't know, really. Maybe barbecue. Oh. Quite nice on barbecue, you know, when she gets them going now. So. Brazen steak means fucking brazen. So it's telling you what to do with it. So what would you do with it? Raise it. Like a stew. Yeah. Can't put that on the fucking barbecue. Just looking for some chicken breast. Some nice chicken breast, boss. Yep. There you go. Look, we've nice shown you. It's nice. Check it. Let's have a look. How much is it? How much is chicken per breast? Yes, that was it. One pound twelve there. It's a lot How less than I get it from my butcher. Is, is it? Your butcher's more expensive? Yeah. Jesus. Four of them, please. Any uh, discount for trade? Discount for trade. How much was it? Four pounds well. Four quid. Four pounds. That's my boy. Lovely. That was it for me. Cheers. Thank Can I have a bill, please? Uh, uh, a receipt. With the AT. <coughs> With the AT. You'd come again, yeah? Absolutely. The more they see you, the more banter you have with them, yeah. the more bargains you get with them, and the cheaper it becomes, yeah, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh, definitely. Then that. the rich just starts to make a bit of fucking money. Yeah. Get the picture? Yeah, I get it. Thank fuck for that. How much have we spent? Just over 12 quid. 12 quid, fantastic. For four portions? Brilliant. OK. French onion soup. It costs 75 pence to make a portion. Okay. How much does it go on the menu for? Yeah. You times it by four. And that should cover everything. 2 95 for a bowl of soup. And we've made money on that. And one thing we're not going to do with the ingredients we bought this morning is waste, waste anything. We waste nothing. With the Valentine's extravaganza just two days away, I'm under no illusions as to what we're up against. Fucking limp dick in the kitchen, you know that? Go get some fucking energy. You're fucking 21, for God's sake. You should be getting fucking 12 hard-ons a day. Not one a fucking month. Let's go. Lee's got a bit of nous. Like, whisk, 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 I've got to hold whisk. Tim's hand every step of the way. Are you sure you want to be a chef? Yes. You are, yeah? In. Right into the centre. This is our one Just chance to see to if Tim can there. cope with his new yep. bistro-style food. I'm going to bring the knife out, put it back in, and bring it to the edge there. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Gently, 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 gently. Make love to it, don't fuck it. Outside leaves. Yeah? What do we do with them? You throw them away. Yeah, we usually throw them away, okay. yeah. Like but that. before we let them loose on the paying customers, I've asked them to cook yeah. for four special people in the privacy of their own home. What I haven't told him is for his own family. You'd like to stir it into it, hard. No, you leave it dangling on top so it gets perfect. Of course you let it fucking stir inside. We've got soup. Chicken, lemon meringue pie. Yeah. Let's go and surprise mum and dad, shall we? Let's go round to their house and you cook 
Red tea. Okay. Cuit de jus, sauce for the chin kiev. Um. Really I'm asking you. Would, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think so. Good. The, because the center is is the sauce. The garlic Ooh, sauce in the center. Fucking now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we don't need any jus. We don't need any jus. Woo. Hello, Madge. Hello. How are you? Surprise. I hate to use Tim's folks as guinea pigs, but with the three-course meal already prepared, all Tim needs to do is reheat the soup and cook the Kievs. This should be a walkover, even for him. I'm going to leave it all to you. Break me shot. He was always in the kitchen as a boy, wanting really? to help bake. Because he loves talking about it, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah. But then he decided whilst he was at school that that's what he wanted to do, and he got himself a job in a kitchen, and it just went on from there told me that he was going to be a chef and he was going to the good food show to meet Gary Rhodes. And off he went. Fantastic. Look yeah. what's happened. Yeah. Oh, fuck me. Don't burn it. Don't burn it. Don't burn it. Here we go. Sorry, keep you waiting. That's quite all right. He's ready. I'll get right. grand, then. Let's not forget, Tim is a head chef. <coughs> Oh. Oops. You burned my pans, have you? <laughs> I might have done half of them, I just burned them, yeah. Last <laughs> thing I said to don't forget your croutons. <laughs> he's managed to fuck them, I've his grand's house. Ladies first. This is some French onion soup. Thank you. Minus the croutons. Kitchen. What are we going to do with this numb fuck? Ah, oh, look at that. Superb. Torched on the outside and pink in the middle. As for the lemon meringue pie, it would get a better reception if you threw it at them. Tim's family wouldn't dream of criticising him, but the paying customers on Valentine's night won't be as forgiving. We've got 44 books for Saturday night. Mm-hmm. And you fucked it for four. What chance have we got for 44? I'm now starting to shit myself. It's my fourth day at Bonaparte's. Tim's first attempt at cooking a simplified bistro meal may have impressed his granny, but he and I both know the awful truth. It was a spectacular flop. You, you paid as a head chef, aren't you? Yeah. Do you think you should be a head chef? Not really. Thank fuck for that. Don't start crying. I'm not. Well, you look, you're about to fucking bubble. Uh, okay, so you're delighted with that, are you? Bookings for tomorrow night, okay, Valentine's okay, so Cabaret, are piling in. With the night. restaurant nearly booked to capacity, I'm trying my hardest to stay positive. That's fine, Mr. Lowe. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But with just a day to go, it'll take more than high energy drinks for these two to pull it off. When someone's been told off, the first thing you do in a kitchen is come back at 100 mile an hour and this guy disintegrates. Every time you tell him something, he just disappears into oblivion and loses all sense of concentration, that little short span that he has. Why don't we swap the roles around tomorrow? Why don't you become the sous chef and Lee becomes the head chef for tomorrow night? No answer. Whatever you want to do, guys. It's your fucking kitchen! You're supposed to say bollocks. No, I'm the fucking chef. My name's Tim Gray. It's me on the menu. No? Yes or no? Yes. Oh. Maybe it's me. I should try the softly, softly approach. We've got a big night Saturday night. It's full. Yeah. And it's the first time since you've both been here that the place is full. Okay, and whilst I'm here, you're not shafting me as well at the same time, you know that. Yep. We're going to work together. Over the next 15, 20 minutes, I want you both to think of something really simple, menu wise. Three starters, three main courses, and three puddings. What do you think, Lee? Soup? Uh, yeah, soup. By passing some of the decision making back to Tim, I'm hoping to build up his confidence and instill some pride in his food. It's hard to write a simple menu when you've had your head up your ass for so long, doing, trying to make 
fancy, silly food. That's the kind of stuff we're going for, isn't it? Really? So, what have they come up with? Main courses, liver and onions, mashed potato, macaroni and cheese, fish and chips, mushy peas, blank um, shot pot. Blank shot pot, that sounds nice. And you come up with the ideas together? Yeah, well, we'll just flip through some books and thought what, what's simple and, um, you know, basically thought what did we used to have at school, what did we like at school and... And not forgetting, where are we? Where, in Silsden, in Yorkshire. Oh. <laughs> We're getting there! We're getting there! In devising this new menu, I'm aiming to take most of the pressure off Tim and Lee during service. 90% of the food can be prepared and perfected a day in advance. That's good. See if you can show, show me you can handle two pans at once. As long as it's made well, it can't fail to be a hit with the customers. Now, there should be 15 things going on there, all at the same time. Coordination, understanding, medium, pink, is it well done, onions, roasted, bang. In short, Bonaparte's new bistro menu is designed to be idiot-proof. Yeah, that would definitely identify them as vegetarians, yeah? Let's go. Yeah, go on. So far, Tim's attitude towards Sue has been that of a stroppy teenager rather than a respectful and supportive employee. I'm going to go on um, tomato soup, a rustic tomato soup, yeah? Yeah. With some little uh, cheese things. That's probably a first he's actually come to. I've had to run down and chase all the time. And then I need this... And then, oh, yeah, 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 it'll come later. I said, I need it now. Well, basically, you just put them through some butter, crush them up. Today it seems a lot better. I don't know what he's been doing to him down there, but he's certainly improving. <laughs> In the week I've been here, I've hardly seen Tim or Lee sample or season anything they've made. No wonder their tasteless food is failing to woo the customers. Everything we do in this kitchen has to be tasted. I don't care if it's a fucking bread roll, a lemon meringue pie or a chicken kiev. You have got to start tasting things. From now on, Bland is off yeah, the menu. Walking, wait, and to teach these wait. two a lesson they'll never forget, I'm resorting to dirty mm -hmm. tactics. You know what a medium steak tastes like, yes? Does that taste like a sirloin, T-bone steak, or is it a rump steak? A sirloin. Sirloin. It tastes like sirloin. Fucking hell. Here we go. Now for the pork. Okay. Open up. OK. Tell me whether that's medium or is that well done? Medium. And? Well done. Well done. None of you got that right. Yes? Yeah. Pork. Oh. Pork and fucking oh. lamb. <laughs> Fuck it now. You don't, you don't realise until someone <laughs> blindfolds you and feeds you that your palate's so non-active. Could have been worse. Could have been chicken. <laughs> we would have looked like fucking idiots. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Sorry. Tim's Jesus had a week of non stop Christ. grief from me. Wait, 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 wait. Put the bowl down. This boy has really tested my patience. All right, how, how do we know they're ready now? Uh, you can lift them upside down. Yeah, there you go. And I really don't know if any of it's sunk in. Well, I'd love to just get it on. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Shit! <What>? Oh. <laughs> but with more than 40 guests expected in just over two hours' time, he'll soon be tested to his absolute limits. <laughs> I slipped. No, no, don't tell me. It was the mud. <laughs> Can't even take a fucking penalty. I'll say this for Tim. He's no quitter, and I don't want to see him fail. But now he's got to prove he's master of his own kitchen. We're not leaving this as a draw, you know that? Hey, in cooking, nobody draws, ever. One thing's for sure. Tonight, he'll either sink or swim. Whoa! Yes! <laughs> Woo! Another two upstairs? Possibly. OK, good news, good news. Another two. So we're up to 50, 48 now. Sue's so never had so many bookings. She's having to move furniture out. Right, lift. To fit more tables in. Mm. You happy with that? Chicken Kiev with roasted vine tomatoes. T-bone steak with homemade chips. Because there's so many involved for dinner, I, I wouldn't right. stall them upstairs for too long. You're really going to dump us in it yeah. big time. Right. Prawn cocktail, green bean salad with mustard dressing. What do you think? Ooh, very I like 
hardly dare say it, but this place has got a real buzz about it. There's one thing missing. What do you like on all your menus? Oh, his name's not on Ah, ah. bingo! <laughs> and where, should, where should we put that? On the back or...? I don't my name on it. We work as a team and it's a giant effort and bistro, you know, that's it. That's the most sensible thing you said to me all fucking week, you know that. Thank you. Every decent restaurant in the country is full on Valentine's night. The competition down the road is packed to the rafters. And for once, so is Bonaparte's. In a small town like Sealsden, business thrives on word of mouth. And if tonight's a disaster, it could break Sue. I have got a fear that he will not be able to cope with the numbers. Especially when he's saying that 11's busy. I don't think so. So we'll see what he's made of. Tim has got to get this right. right two for upstairs, two soup, two chicken. OK, hey, six o'clock, first order's in. OK. Hello, chef. Yes. Well, what are we... Well, I'll give it to Scott. Scott, first order in. Hey, are we going to let the kitchen porter call out the tickets or are you going to call them out? Come on. On order, two soup, two chicken, one creme brulee, one treacle tart. Let's go. Soup's made. Get on to boil. Scotty, put some water in it. <laughs> Please. Something's burning. What's that burning? It's just on the air. It's on the grill thing. It's not the croutons, eh? No, it's not the no. crew one. Don't burn the croutons. I'm not burning croutons. Wait, just... Soup's on, yeah? Yeah. Pan on for the chicken? Not yet. No, I think we should put the pan on first, yeah? Start the chicken, and as they're eating the soup, the chicken's cooking, yeah? Are you all right, yeah? Yeah, yeah. First I'm order fine. in, it's I'm upstairs, okay. you're okay. Well, you, the pan's not on for the chicken, yeah? Don't burn the croutons. Okay? All right, how long for that soup? Five past. 45 seconds. I'll fuck off with you, yeah? Hey, what the fuck are you doing? Out of the way. Young man. What are you doing? Slow down. Talk to him. Lee, can you send the two soup, please? Wait. Look at the croutons. Charcoal again. Oh, God, it's the first fucking order. What's the matter? Nothing. No, well, you're, you're, you're cooking like an absolute twat. You know that. Yeah? Just take your time. Big deep breath and talk to Lee a little bit. You're just on your own, spinning round, round and round, and just creating a fucking bedlam, yeah? Calm down, get yourself organised, yeah? And control yourself. Yeah. Now, fucking come back to me a little bit. Come back to me a bit, yes? Oh, I'm back. <laughs> fucking... <laughs> come on, Timmy. Fresh start, or we're gonna go down like a sack of shit. That's better, Lee. Look at him, look. Hey, nice and bright. Give us a smile. It's well done, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, come on, come in. Teamwork. Two minutes for some veg, Lee. Scotty, can I have two ovals out of there, mate, please? On order, three-prong cocktail, one soup, one sirloin medium, one T-bone medium, one sirloin medium. So don't rush the stars. We've got a lot of stuff to get on here. Good. Communicate. Good. How long for veg? One and a half. Yeah, mate, yeah. On order, one prawns, one beans, one Kiev, one sirloin, well done, one lemon, one brulee. Scotty, to what I can have uh, two ovals out, mate, please. Good. That's it. Now you're talking to the whole brigade now. Now you're talking to the team, which is fantastic. Yeah. Keep it going, yes? But then you stop talking, we're going to go. We're going to go down, yeah? Yeah. Hey, it's not quite right, but at least it's moving, yeah? yeah. Medium with salad. That's a medium on it, so we're out salad. And that's a rare, yeah, we're out salad. Keep it together, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Let's not get nervy. Food was was excellent. It's, yeah, very enjoyable. It's what we expected to have, really. It was uh, really tasty and really enjoyable. It's nice. How many more to come, please, Sue? Uh, there's another four. Four. I overbooked, actually. The local competition tonight has got 46 booked. If we do this last four, we've beaten them. Ooh, yeah. Wow. What is, yeah. 
Does that not just lift the morale up a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. Table, medium, 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 and a chip. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. showtime. Cabaret, I'd like to introduce Tom Sawyer, who... After Prong Cocktail, get some uh, holidays on, yeah? Call service, please, uh, Scotty. Take it away. One T-bone steak medium and one chicken Kiev, please. And that's all going to table 12. Tell these two first please. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the colour look. When it's brown, it's cooked. When it's black, it's cooked. <laughs> What's the pastry, please? Pies. Veg first, veg first. Two sirloin, medium. It's not finished yet, but oh. yeah, well done. <laughs> Tim's gran and granddad are celebrating their 44th wedding anniversary. At last, Tim can repay them for the rubbish he served up a couple of nights ago with a delicious, well-cooked meal. It was lovely, that steak. It was beautiful, too. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. It did. Yeah. Brought back memories, yeah. that people. Did it? Yeah. Hey, do you hear what granddad said? Yeah, it's brilliant. Brought yeah. back memories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You really surprised me tonight, and I'm really seriously over the moon that you didn't fuck it. I'm serious, sir. Yeah. Because the first 15 minutes of six o'clock, you acted like the biggest twat in Britain. You know that. All over the shop, and you pulled it back together. And that wasn't me. That was you. And the feedback from them out there has been brilliant. What does that tell you? What does that? What does that put in there? I haven't had a service like that for a long time. And yeah. these stupid fucking illusions of grandeur, and all this stupid fine dining crap that you're trying to do. It's gone. Do you understand? Yeah. Exactly where you are now? Yeah, yeah, totally understand. Do you understand what you're capable of doing yes. within this restaurant? Yes. Stop trying to take it beyond something it's never going to be. You'll fuck the restaurant and you'll fuck yourself. Big time. Mm -hmm. So never forget tonight. You know when that shark lights. With his teeth Tonight, Sue's takings are a record £2,000. I thought the guys downstairs are absolutely brilliant. It's up to you now not to allow it to go back to where it was. I've been and too soft. You have to be, yeah, exactly. I'm glad you're saying it because I've been that too was soft. exactly what I was going to say next. And I've also. Um, Allowed him to have his head too much. Yeah. I also think you've been confused to what you want because you haven't been focused on one direction for the restaurant because you've been you know, jumping all, things, yeah. all over the place. And that's part of a panic. Yeah. And that's wrong. And now tonight, clearly evident exactly what you need to do from this day onwards. And if he changes anything, I'll pickle his nuts. When I arrived at Bonaparte a month ago, it literally had no customers. Head chef Tim Gray was a liability. <coughs> I didn't realise they were fucking off. He couldn't even cook an omelette. You're taking the piss, you know that. In one gruelling week, we transformed Bonaparte from a failing fine dining restaurant into a buzzing bistro. <laughs> with Tim sending out quality food to nearly 50 contented customers on Valentine's night. <laughs> but since I left, Sue's given Tim two written warnings over his attitude. Now I'm back, unannounced, to find out what is going on. Turn that fucking thing off. My God. What's going on? Chilly. Chilly? It's Friday night. It's 7.30. How many's booked? Four. Four. And you got the music blaring away? Yeah, I'm just... Where's Lee? He's upstairs on the bar. He's in the bar. What the fuck is that in there? Muscles. You're not serving them, are you? Yeah. What the fridge is like? My God, oh my... What is that shit in there? That is mould and fur. Dear, oh dear. So you haven't changed, have you? 
A whole week drumming into their thick skulls, and it comes to this. Holy fuck! This is a living fucking nightmare! Nobody in this place is taking control, and in this state, a health inspector would close them down without a second thought. So I've got to show you this because it's part of your responsibility, and this is your gaff. There you go. Should not be in. You didn't see this, Sue? No, I didn't actually. In fairness to Tim, it was, it was doing okay. It seemed to be okay. For the first three days, and then it went. And then... This is not right. This is this is fucking miles away. This is a nightmare. You know that because it's more loss on top of more loss and more loss and more mold. That's what worries me. Because you need to touch that. You need to rub your finger on that. You need to go to a chip. You need to season something. You put your finger in the tomato soup, and then they're all fucked. You've just contaminated the whole place, and that's what really worries me. This kitchen is not fit to cook a fucking thing in, right now. And that's your problem. I think I better just close and put due to refurbishment. And you should ban out Gracery, you know that. It's been giving him another chance and another chance. That's, uh, that's, I can't tolerate that. It's just going to end up. Uh, well, it's a professional suicide, isn't it? It's conned me, simple as that. I don't honestly think he did it deliberately. I don't think he's a, a nasty piece of work. I just think he lives in a Walter, Walter Mitty world. I begin to think that he's just convinced himself, to be mm. honest. To go from Valentine's Day evening to this is, it's not even funny. There's just something wrong with that. There really is. Yeah, but, Valentine's Day, a good man. I don't think I've gone home to bed or whatever feeling in a better, happier state of mind. And tonight I don't think I could go to bed in a worse one. It's beyond recognition, really, isn't it? How fucking stupid that, that someone can be, you know what I mean? It's a dog one. And who is that someone to? Oh, that would be me. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, at least the bar's busy, that is one saving grace. But really, thank God she closed that kitchen down because it was fucking disgusting. I mean, really appallingly bad. Shockingly bad. You just let me get on with it. It'd you, be a damn if sight I better. let you get on with it, this floor would be It'd knee be deep in SH1 T. Well, before you rang me up, all aggressive, I were getting on with you fine, I was respecting you, and giving it all the like gentlemanly bloody stuff I